Here's five advanced bullhorn techniques that you're gonna to wanna to see. In at number one, we've got advanced note searching. So to access the advanced note search, come up to the search box within candidates, contacts or placements. And down here, we've got further items that you can add. So on a standard search, for example, you would add a record that was in the last uh, they added before. And then we could use advanced note searching to do this further. So you can then see what records does or does not have specific notes within a time period. So we want to see all of our candidates who have had the action pre-screen or left message or uh, candidate call. And we want this to be everybody who has, who has had their note to action added within the last year. Alternatively, you could say we want to see the, the comments to include a specific item or even added um, created by a specific owner. So you've got a lot of flexibility here. So we can come in, press search, and this is gonna pull up all of those candidates who have got that within there. This means if you're trying to search for a candidate and with, for a specific role and thousands of records come up, you can do an advanced search to see the candidates you've spoken to or haven't spoken to within a specific time period so you can understand if they need to be re-engaged or you can qualify them or pre-screen them for those roles because there may well be a candidate you spoke to six months ago who might be perfect for this. So this is a great way of understanding and speaking to the candidates already on the system who you have had past activity with. So if you're doing regular searches within Bullhorn or you need to see very crucial data quickly, favorite searches is a great way to do this. With a favorite search, we can create a dynamic list of information that is going to be up to date. This means that when you create the list, if new records fall into that criteria, they automatically enter that list. And likewise, if they no longer match that criteria, they leave the list. This is dynamic, it's unlike a hot list, it's really up to date. So an example of this would be, we could come through and see all of candidates with submissions. So we've now got 26 candidates with submissions. As I mentioned a minute ago, if one more candidate gets a submission sent today, they will automatically be within this list. So you can now come through to favorites and you can save this search. You can save it privately, so it's just with you, or publicly with others. And you can call this, candidates with submissions. Another option would be to see all of the candidates who have been pre-screened and keep this up to date. So you could, for example, say does have action pre-screen within the last, let's say 60 days. And you've now got a long list of people which you could then save here as, we'll do a public list, candidates with pre-screen. And we can get that saved, just like so. You might want to take it a step further, because you might want to say, right, we want, to, we want a new list of everybody who is in a specific location. So we want to come up here and say country, include all, United Kingdom. There we go. So these are all our UK candidates with a pre-screen. So you can come through here, And we've now got a few lists there that you can use. There we go. So if you are coming back onto a search and you need to identify those people, just come to favorites and you can select those ones here. There's a few favorite searches that I would recommend every recruiter has access to. That would be candidates recently added, candidates with submissions, candidates with interviews, so you can then apply role searching across those different groups. You could do contacts added, contacts with meetings, contacts with jobs. Under the vacancy section, you can of course do open jobs, which is probably the most important one. And within placements, you can look at placements that have upcoming starters and then placements whose end date is in the future, which means that you've still got live contractors or live permanent candidates. 
So if you can go through and create those favorite search, you're gonna be so much more efficient because you've got that information there within Bullhorn at the click of a button. So next up, we're gonna take a look at hot lists. Now, as I mentioned, a hot list is very different to a favorite search. A hot list is a static list. So unless you're using automation to pull people in and out, these are normally lists that have been manually created by recruiters. So under menu, we can come to hot lists, which is up here, and we can create a new hot list. So we're gonna call this, um, let's say student hot list. And you can make this private or public. We're gonna make this public. And my advice, my advice is always make them public so everybody in your business can see them. We're gonna press save. And now we're gonna find candidates to add to this list. So we can use potentially uh, a favorite search or we can come through and just do a standard search. So I'm, in this scenario, I'm gonna add all of our students. So we've got students here and we've got 234 that we can add to the list. Now, what we, what we don't wanna do is just add hundreds and hundreds of records to a hot list and it be too much. So you probably want to come through and select your top candidates and treat this this way because at the moment, if we were to use a hot list and add all of our students to it, there's no real advantage of doing that. So my advice is using hot list for pools of your really, really good talent. So let's say for example, we've just got off a call with, Nicola, uh, with Isabel and we know Isabel is an absolute brilliant student. She's ready to take the next step in her career and we think we can place her. You can just come through to actions and then there'll be a button down here that says manage hot lists and you can add her to the student hot list. So after, as time goes on, you can add more and more candidates to your hot list and that way you're then gonna have a hot list that's got some really good people in it who you know are good because you have put them in there. So especially if you've got a contract book, this is a great, great way to keep on top of everybody. Of course, as anything with Bullhorn, you can do this in bulk as well. So if you wanna to speak to these five people, you can add these to a hot list and they're all gonna get added in just like so. So what that now means is we can come to our hot lists, I'm gonna press refresh, and we've got some or seven candidates in there that looks a little bit like this. Now, rather annoyingly, the UI on hot lists isn't brilliant within Bullhorn. There's a lot of functionality that I think we're missing from this page, but of course, there's a really good workaround. So you can come to candidates, of course, clear the search that you're doing, and then you can come up here and you can actually type in hot lists. So we can then see, let's select all of the candidates who are in our student hot list. There's the seven that we've got. You can then, of course, save this as a favorite search. See what I did there? So you can come through this and we can then have here, make that public. And as you can see, this is gonna give you a lot more information because you can select and choose the columns that you need. So that is how we um, use hot lists. They are really, really good ways for you to track uh, everything that you need within Bullhorn. And these work really, really well within Bullhorn Automation. So if you do have specific groups and hot lists that you are creating, you can set automated campaigns or actions against those specific people. But one final thing, one final little hack from me is you can also come through and of course say does not have the note uh, action within the last one day. So out of these candidates here, not one of them has been spoken to in the last day. And if we expend, extend this further to 60 days, you've now got these people in your hot list have not been spoken to. And if they're in your hot list, they should be good candidates, good talent that you can place. So we should be speaking to them on a regular basis. So creating a favorite search of candidates in hot lists not spoken to will be a game changer. Another great thing that you can do in Bullhorn is add tasks to everybody. So if we take a look at our lovely candidates who are in our hot list, we can start to add some tasks to them. So let's say um, I've just got off the phone with Isabel and we've had a really good pre-screen. We could come through actions and we can add a task. So we're gonna say call cool, um, regarding job search. You can add in some information here, obviously the more the merrier, but you don't need to add loads. And we're gonna call this as a uh, recruiting call. It's gonna be high priority. And I'm actually gonna call her tomorrow at 
9 a.m. 9.15. And it's going to be a public event, and I want a reminder five minutes before. So at 10 past nine tomorrow, I'm going to get a notification. Now, you could also tag different people in it. So we've tagged Isabel. If there is a specific, a specific vacancy, you could say, right, well, we think this is the job she might be good for. Let's add her in. And then that's going to save. So you can see that uh, we've now saved that. And you can then see under Isabel, we've got her tasks. And tomorrow, once we've done that, we can tick it off. And obviously everything within the edit tab is editable. Now, of course, you can take this a step further because within Bullhorn and the menu, there is a lovely menu uh, called tasks. And you can see all of your live tasks. Now, what I will say is so many recruiters don't use tasks. So get ahead of your competition and really use tasks to underpin your diary and the activity that you have to do so nothing and nobody gets forgotten. So within the planner, we can see the tasks that have happened. And you can see this um, or for your tasks, for others, you've got different columns that you can use. So once you've done a task, we can tick that off. So that one was overdue. I'm going to tick that off because I was actually it's actually done. And now you've got the date it was completed. Now, you might just want to see everything that um, has not, sorry, is not completed. So you can see here's all of our incomplete tasks, or you might want to see everything. This is going to give you a really good overview of what you need to do and the activity within it. So you can also come through and add a reoccurring task. So we're going to add in a monthly check-in with this candidate, and it's going to be a recruiting call, high priority, and we want this today at 8.15, public event. We want a reminder uh, two hours before. It's, this is with the candidate. And we want this to be interval based. So we're going to say that every month um, we want uh, this reminder. Or you could say the first Tuesday or the second Tuesday, we want this information based. We're, well, we're going to do interval based today and just say every month. So. We're going to set and make sure that is obviously stop repeating. No. We're going to press save. This will then get added into my tasks. And as you can see, just one has been added. But once this one has been added, the next one will then go through. So tasks are a really, really good way to automate various parts of your recruitment process from calling people back if they haven't answered right through to candidate uh, and placement care. And you can really uh, unlock this even further using automation. So let's say, for example, you've had a call or a meeting with a client and that contact you haven't spoken to recently. You could say, right, after three months, we're going to add in a task to re-engage with them and follow up. Uh, to help support those business development efforts. So tasks is an amazing way uh, and feature to use within Bullhorn. So I see it often not used, so get ahead of your competition and start using it. Now the final little hack is about using binoculars and inline edit. Uh, I've left this till last because I'm hoping some of you already know this, but if not, please do take a look. So under the binoculars, we can use these, and this is on every single tab, whether this is a candidate or a contact, and you can select and bring up specific things. So Gandalf's CV is here. We can see his details. We can see if there was activity here, you'd be able to see it. You can see all of the notes. You can see his CV. As you can imagine, and as you can see, this is a lot easier than us clicking through and then having to go and find his files or his CV. So you can use this and you can quite quickly see the activity about different people. So if you wanted to see the activity, you can just come through this and use the binoculars to see what is going on and if they have that specific information and that activity there. Now, another thing is that you can come through and you can edit their profiles. So actually, if you've seen that his email address is spelled correctly and it's .co.uk, you can come through and change that. And if, you, if you've got something like this, in this, he's missing a location, you can come through, you can add that in here, or you could even come through and update his job title. So using the binoculars and the inline edit is really helpful. If we take a look over to placements, you can also, also use the binoculars for something like this, which gives you uh, the placement activity. And if there was a change request, you'd be able to see the change request within that. By the way, there's one more thing that might be costing your recruitment agency millions. So watch this video next to discover just how easy it is to fix.